So welcome back. This is the second episode in relation to analysis and what's possible. Um, this time I'm going to look at the whole recording a game from start to finish process. So we're going we're gonna to look through the different types of cameras, tripods, um, how you can store it, uh, different types of software that you can use to cut it down or code it or clip it. Obviously the first thing you're going to need if you are going to video a game or record a game is a camera. It can be difficult to know where to start so I have a couple of recommendations I'm going to pull up. Um, for like the base model, this Canon or 800 is actually really good. It's got a very good zoom, it's got good um, image capture uh, it records at a decent resolution it doesn't have 4k but it's 1080 is, is very good and it's light and it's cheap and it's easy to transport and it will last three four years no problem at all um, if we want to get you want to take it up a notch or you, you you feel that the image quality is not good enough well then this here would be the camera that most teams will use from the uh, video analysis point of view, so this would be their day-to-day -day cameras in and around training and or at games. They have the luxury of being able to take official video from the TV companies or the production companies, but this here is their day-to-day -day camera. Um, it's got really good zoom. The resolution is incredible. It's obviously it's a bit pricier at eleven $1 hundred dollars. That's just two options. That's one I would recommend the. Um, I would recommend this one if you're getting started up, especially here in Texas. Majority of us do not have a need for the 1100 um, G50, and I just wanted to show examples of different price points. Um, after your camera, you're going to need a tripod. This is just—it's a very basic. It's a five-foot, very light, lightweight tripod. It's twenty-six dollars. I mean, if all you're doing is video and games, and you have some elevation to work with, this is perfect. Um, the other options here is you've got this extra light. It's a six foot one. So this other option here is a six foot uh, lightweight tripod. It's a lot sturdier than the other one. I mean, it's an extra ten dollars. I would recommend spending the ten dollars. Again, if you have if you have height to work with, or you have a little bit of elevation to work with, this would be great. Um, I wanted to show, because I've started to see some of them around Texas, I wanted to show these extendable tripod stands as well. So they can go anywhere from 20 feet to, I think one goes up to 36 foot. Uh, now they're a lot pricier. This is like the base model here. It's $300 and then if you don't have elevation to work with, you can put it on the sideline, run your camera up, and then normally they have a little screen down the bottom so you're able to see what you're recording. Um, Again, it's a nice tool to use. Would I recommend buying one? Probably not. And much like with the cameras, there's so many options to choose from. It's about finding what works best for yourself. Um, just go online and do a random search. And there's lists after lists explaining the pros and cons of, of every item. So then, when recording, I like to use a micro SD card uh, or just a normal SD card. I prefer that than recording straight onto the camera's, camera's hard drive because it's just easier when you need to uh, start working on it. So now I want to talk just briefly about the camera angles and just a couple of key points when actually videoing the game. The first thing and probably the most important is the two pass rule. So that in your frame you have two pass distance from the rook or from whoever has the ball. That way we can see inside and outside options, we can see plays developing and we can see the defense adjust. What is quite common is we're not actually zoomed in enough, so therefore we don't get the detail of the breakdown. So as you can, as you can see in this game here, we haven't zoomed in enough, it's hard to see a lot of detail in around the breakdown and running lines and passes for instance. The next thing, so what we want is, and what it should look like is, this what I call the two pass rule, as I said. So we have our set piece at the center point in the, in the image. We can see enough detail around that. And then we have both the attack, both the attacking and defending tens in frame. So we have our two pass rule, so we stop it here. We're able to see two players outside the first receiver. We can tr see our defense tracking across, and we can see plays developing there's enough detail in the tackle to see the good tackle technique we get the turnover there and same thing here it goes to a scrum 
Again, we have the detail on screen. We zoom in a little bit. We're focusing on the attacking side now. Ball is out. We're going to take a look at a game where the camera work isn't great. So as you can see here, we don't have the elevation that required. We are a little bit off center field. There's a slight tilt to the camera. Um, we are zoomed in on the scrum at center mass, but the camera is offset. So on the right hand side over here we're recording all this space which is the attacking team and there's no need for that ideally we have the camera shifted to the left so then we can take a look at what the defenders are doing um, ball goes in, scrum happens and again there's no movement here I, so what we would have liked to see would be the camera panning to the left we track here because of the elevation we can't really focus on the running lines but we have a nice smooth motion tracking the play um, there's a score in the corner which is missed. So just to finish up, three key factors to follow is the two pass rule, the set piece at center of frame, and then a smooth follow of play. I'm now going to move on to the best way to share the information and games with the with your team or players. So again, much like the, the cameras, there's a wide variety of ways to do this. Um, the most basic way is Google Drive. So just upload the game to that um, with the simple of sharing of a link. Anyone can watch the game. Uh, other options apart from Google Drive is you have Dropbox, you have Vimeo. So this is what the, the Vimeo interface looks like. Now, when we're going to talk about performance analysis, that means we're going to start talking about software right now. Um, I think the most common and most well-known software in the US would be Huddle. Um, I know a lot of high school football uh, use this. So Huddle is an analysis software, but it's also a um, complete online package. So for instance, if we just look through the timeline here, this is from a while ago, you can add the athletes to the rosters. So that here's some players that the new players that join the club get added in. Um, then you can schedule the events. Here was the game schedules on these days, and then you can also post the video of the games, where people are able to watch it on Huddle. So that's Huddle. Um, the next option, and what I will recommend, and we'll go into a lot more detail later on, is um, Coach Logic. Um, here's what the interface looks like. It's the same principle. You have your team room. Um, I sorry, I had to put this in German. Um, your team room, your video room, calendar, uh, other resources like uh, you can upload your, your game plans and, and attacking shapes and stuff like that. Uh, we're going to talk about Coach Logic uh, in a little bit. Coach Logic is probably about a thousand dollars for the year, depending on the number of users, and Huddle comes in a little bit cheaper than that. Um, something else that you can use is Dartfish. Now, Dartfish is actually really good for individual skills and looking at like body lines and angles. It's, it's great for height and stuff. Um, and again, there is, I'll put up a link, there's a good video, video explaining it um, a lot better than I can. Here's your rough, your rough pricing. It's actually um, very reasonably priced. Um, it's a British-based company. And like this, so the top of the range would, comes to about $80 a month. So now we're going to get into like the, the top of the range uh, type analysis software. Uh, this Windows-based one is Naxport Pro. This is N, N Pro Plus. And then you have your, your coding windows like it looks there. Um, this is what your timeline would look as as the game plays along. And then you, you, you tag the events. They'll all appear like that. So then you can pull them up and play all the instances that you want. And it's a very, very good Windows-based software. Um, I like it a lot. I like the uh, the way you're able to do the like the possession-based stuff, like you see here, the different types of attack, the different types of presses that you tag. Um, but when it comes to performance analysis in sport, one brand that is the de facto go-to at the top range, at the top level, is Sports Code. So Sports Code was bought by Huddle um, a while back. So there's been a slight rebranding, but the the service is still the same. Uh, the ability to live code, the integration with other statistical analysis software, the grading and scoring of individual actions per game. Um, I 
I'll put this link up here, um, but it talks about what the Leicester Tigers and how they use it in the, in the whole process, and they, they explain it way more if you are interested in learning more. Sports code is very expensive, um, and realistically only the top teams um, will be able to afford it and utilize it to the best of their ability. So the great benefit of Sports Code and Knack Sport is the ability to live code. So in game you're able to watch the game and, and code it and assign values and do some team stuff which gives you instant feedback. Um, in order to do that with the cameras that we have discussed already, you're going to have to buy one of these Blackmagic uh, mini recorders. So it is an incredible piece of technology that is able to take the live video stream convert it and save it onto the onto your Mac or laptop which enables you to live code uh, instantly um, so that's well, that one's here that one starts at 200 um, but yeah if you are going to do live coding uh, of games this is what you will need unless your camera has the ability to process otherwise so that is a brief overview of the equipment hardware and software you will need to record games and to start your video analysis uh, journey. Um, I mentioned earlier we're going to talk about Coach Logic. Coach Logic for me is by far the best product on the market for the price point and what it actually provides. So this is on, on the com computer, this is what the team room looks like, this is the main page and we have clips which we'll get to later. Uh, again this is so we have up here you just your your live feed the calendar for all the events you have the the video room and all your resources so we're going to actually talk about analysis right now so let's just pull up uh, yeah let's pull up Utah at Austin um, this is what your coding in window looks like so down here you have your timeline along the bottom so we can just drag along so we can skip all the starts of the game and let's get to what do we see there we go, there's a scrum coming up there, somewhere around here. So that's how easy it is to navigate the game. So the great thing about this is it's all about tags and what we want to do. So if we go to add, let's go, uh, we can go s s scrum. So lead and lag time, and I explained that. So when you hit the button, it's going to automatically record or start recording five seconds before you hit the button and then for five seconds after. So for, so five and five is generally a breakdown kind of stuff. For scrums we would like we want a three and a eight second lag time. So when we hit the button we, we get to see the scrum engagement and we get to see the transition into the strike move or attack after that. And we can just change the color, let's make it pink and then we can confirm. So once the button for the event is created, it's simply just a matter of you can tap the button and then down here you'll see we have a three second lead in time and our eight second lag time. Um, the great thing about this software is everything is customizable. Everything is quite easy to uh, remove if you want. We just a matter of edit. You can change everything, change things, but we are going to delete this one. So after you remove that, we can you can import, import previous um, tags. So let's go NOLA versus Austin. So here is are all the buttons and events that I have from a previous game. It's just a simple matter of import and then here is your tag window. Let me I'll make this smaller. So your tag window and then the buttons are there. So you can change the game speed here and it's quite easy to do a, a quick coding of the team events at double speed for instance. And like I said, these are all, so this is in uh, German, it's uh, all editable, we can edit here, uh, we can change that to Scrum Austin, I have a different light time here, bang, and that's done, finish editing, and now we are in coding. So we hit that button, we can press play, just for track, so after this, we are going to tag the a strike move, so this scrum gets reset. We can use the go forward five seconds button. We can go forward again. There is a close zoom in. Wait for the engagement. Crouch. Man. We can tag that one. Um, come down here to the strike button. My dog agrees with that. And we're waiting, and then 
still waiting and the ball is out we hit strike and then that will log that you get into touch okay so what that looks like is you can see all of these buttons and a whole series of buttons will be so I'll show you a completed game So here is the matrix for on a completed game. Here are all of the codes. Um, if you want to do just a quick search, let's say we are looking for strike moves. Here they are down there. Here's the time in the video when they were at. So if we click that, get the audio. So we click, no. That was a red card. Here's another strike move, we hit this one, ball comes out, the camera work is not great in this game, and that's why we actually lose out on that. But let's go here, we'll take another one. And there is your strike moves which are logged. If we want to look at um, penalties which were lost, we can go here, it's the same thing, they're all logged up. Sorry. So when you build your database, it's actually quite easy to sort through the game and have a look. So, you know, people say that players don't have enough time these days. Um, so when it is logged and you have both the attack and defensive lineouts all one or two clicks away, then your lineout captain is able to log online, hit the lineout button for quick searches, and then immediately watch all of the lineouts that we had and what the opposition had. So that makes it very easy to do analysis. So what that will look like is if we go to search and let's just say strike moves then they are all down the bottom here go to add all the playlist we don't have one so we start a new one uh, strikes and then you have the privacy where it could be public or be private we create that and then confirm a new playlist so then these 11 clips will all be logged together so when you share the playlist what it will look like is this you've got the little pause button down here uh, we can just skip ahead, you can skip to the fifth or sixth one, whatever. So it's very easy to look through large parts of the game very quickly. So here's another strike move. And again, the camera works not great. We go to the next one, we've already seen that one. So that's what that looks like. So once we've created these playlists, uh, we've made it easy for the players to look at the game. So when we've created these playlists, uh, we've made it easy for the players to be able to break down the film and to go through the game themselves. Some other couple of options about this software is, um, we can go down, we go back to our video room, sorry, that's over here, and then you have the categories and you can assign each game for categories. So here we go, we go opposition versus this team um, and let's just look here you can go to views history so we can track who's watched who's watched the games for how long they've watched it when they first did it um, and then we have the main feed which I will talk a lot more about next week when we're looking at uh, video analysis during practice or training um, and what can be done there and how it's best utilized so that's just a brief overview of analyzing a game. Uh, as I said, I've shown many different uh, programs and software options. Uh, I do prefer Coach Logic, but majority of all the software options work the same through coding and tagging live events. It's, so it's just about the interface and how it uh, interacts with the players. So Coach Logic also has a mobile app. Um, we'll talk about that next week but you are able to set it up so you get push notifications when you are tagged. So for instance, on this main screen here, I've, everybody is tagged. We were looking at some attack options. Uh, yeah, look, look at this one here. Oh, it's still everyone is tagged, but this is more around practice stuff. Um, and then so everyone, will, everyone in the group gets a push notification that there is a clip that they should watch. Um, so we'll talk about that next week. I understand that there is a lot of information in this video from cameras to tripods to different types of software and uh, how to approach certain things. Um, 
So if there are any questions, then please do not hesitate to ask. I'm willing to expand on anything and help out as best I can.